Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. We are just gonna let everyone from the waiting room come on in. Um, and in the meantime, please feel free to um, submit the poll that you are seeing so that we can have an idea of who is here tonight. And um, for those asking, we will be recording this workshop. And as long as you registered on Handshake, you will receive the link um, to access the, the recording, um, the slides, all of our resources that we will be sharing tonight. Okay, doke. Okay, and we, so. And we, we will be putting a ton of links into the chat. So you can either copy paste those links from the chat um, and, or we, when we send out the video, we will also be doing a transcript of the chat so that you can see, see that later. Okay, so um, I do see a steady trickle in, but I'm going to kick us off um, in the meantime. So hi, everyone. I'm Denise Hapton. I'm a career engagement educator at the UCLA Career Center, specifically the liaison to the School of Engineering. Um, and I'm joined by Will. Hey everybody, good evening. My name is Will Herrera and I'm director of the undergraduate internship program and undergraduate research program here at Samueli Engineering. And um, it's good to meet you all virtually remotely. Um, I didn't get to see many of you. You all hopefully, if first year students and new transfer students got to meet Denise at welcome day and I was out last week. so. Um, welcome to Samoli Engineering, and uh, it's good to see you all this evening. Yeah, so today we are going to talk about how to show up and stand out at our upcoming engineering and tech career fairs. Um, and so Will is going to you know, kind of walk us through. Thank you all for, you know, um, filling in this poll so that we have an idea for all of us of who's here. Um, and Will, do you want to kind of break that down? Yes, absolutely. So again, welcome everybody. The purpose of tonight's workshop is intended for um, new students. Um, all students are invited, but especially students who have never attended uh, or are rookies at attending the big engineering and tech career fair that's scheduled for October um, 12th and 13th in a couple of weeks. Um, the attendance is automatically taken, so um, we do want you to fill out the poll. It looks like we have about 112 of the 122 people who have filled out their poll. Um, so we're going to wait for everybody. We're at about 91%. So if you haven't clicked submit yet on the poll, please do so, so I can share that. Um, brief introduction. So I am director of the undergraduate internship program and undergraduate research program here. I have a team of peer advisors. We are, uh, our office is located in the Engineering Student Resource Center at 6288 Bolter Hall. And um, our role, our job is to provide all of the undergraduate students at Samuel Engineering as many internship and research opportunities as possible. And to facilitate searching for those positions, applying to those positions, soliciting uh, and, and securing those positions. Uh, and that's uh, my primary role here at the School of Engineering. And Denise, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so um, like I mentioned, I'm Denise Hafton. I'm a career engagement educator at the UCLA Career Center. Um, the Career Center is the one hosting these large career fairs. Um, we are here to help connect you with industry, with employers. We even help with grad school, which a lot of students don't realize. Um, so anything post you know, graduate, um, we are here to help you out. Um, so today we'll be walking through um, how to present yourself for these career fairs and specifically how to maneuver it because this year um, they are virtual, entirely virtual. Um, and so we will walk you through um, and I'll, I'll kind of explain it, but we'll walk you through what that looks like um, so that you know you are in best foot forward and you're ready to go. Registration did open up yesterday. And so you are all set um, and we'll walk you through all of that. So um, that's what we will cover today. Um, how, why to go through it, um, how to go through it. And then we will also be covering the engineering resume. We want you to present yourselves well um, at the career fair, what the next steps are, um, you know, and, and resources that we have to support you in those steps. Uh, 
before we jump in, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll, Denny, just to share with the students so they have a feel for who's in the audience. So I'm going to end the poll now and share the results. Um, so it looks like we have 52% are first year students. So awesome, congratulations to you new first year students for coming. Um, we definitely feel like this is, we're hoping that in the next hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes, you get a, a ton of tips on how to prepare for your first ever uh, career fair here at Samoli uh, on campus. Um, and we have 12% are third year transfer students. So those are also new students. So welcome to the campus. Um, you know, this is your first quarter on campus here. We got about 16% second year students, 11% third year students, 4% fourth and beyond, and another 5% that are fourth and beyond transfer students. So welcome to all of you. Again, we have an intended targeted audience here for new people who have never attended uh, the on-campus engineering and tech career fair, but uh, again, it's open to all, of course. As far as major breakdown, we have 6% uh, aerospace, 8% uh, bio-E, 6% uh, chemi, 4% civil. Uh, CS is our largest uh, major on, uh, at the School of Engineering, so it makes sense that we have about 42% CS, 13% EE, 3% um, materials, and then 17 mechanical. And only 1% undeclared, I'm surprised. Usually we have more um, undeclared first-year students. Um, third question was, have you ever attended the career fair? And again, 90% of you haven't, so you're in the right place. For the, that 10% that have been, maybe they went to the career fair last year, but it was probably overwhelming. You probably attended and be like, uh, oh my God, what's happening? This is too much and, and, and didn't get, uh, didn't make the most out of the, the, the fair. And so you're, you're back um, or you're, you're here for, for tips on how to maximize your time at the career fair. And then topics that we'll be covering today, um, logistics of career fair, we'll be covering um, obviously tips, how to research companies, like what to do before the career fair, what to do during the career fair, um, you know, preparing your elevator pitch resume and uh, how to talk to a recruiter. So these are all topics we'll be covering um, today. So um, thanks everybody for participating in the poll. Denise, I don't know if you wanna add anything here. Um, so I just want to go over a little bit of Zoom logistics. So we are hosting this as a meeting so that you do have a bit more of an opportunity to interact with us, um, but we will have designated times for Q&A. So feel free to use your reactions, you know, whatever you want to do, but I do ask that you please keep yourselves muted um, until we open up that Q&A time. Um, and I apologize if I've already like manually muted you. Um, I don't think you meant to have it on. Um, nothing personal, I swear. It's just for the recording. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to dive right into preparing you for this virtual fair. Um, okay, so what is a career fair? And Will, did you want to go over this part? <laughs> yeah, I think this. I'll, I'll do this section and then hand it back off, off okay. to you. Um, so what is the career fair? Um, normally in a, in a typical quarter, um, so the Career Center hosts the largest fair for engineering and tech um, students, and that's every, it's fall quarter, and it's also hosted in winter quarter, and in spring there's a, uh, uh, there is a career fair in spring, it's not an engineering and tech specific, it's a broad kind of spring forward career fair for all majors, however, more than half of the companies traditionally who show up to the spring career fair are looking for engineering students. So I always tell engineering students to show up to the spring quarter career fair also. But we typically have between 80 and 90 employers. Uh, again, for the engineering tech fair specifically, those are employers looking for engineering or tech specific students and majors. Um, the employers have about a 10 minute window to do one-on-one. -on -one, so there are appointment slots that you can sign up for. So again, like Denise mentioned, the uh, registration for the career fair opened yesterday. Uh, so you should be able to on handshake, uh, maybe then you can put the handshake link in the chat for us um, so that students can click there and register for the career fair. And then little by little between now and the actual date of the career fairs, companies will be posting 10 minute windows for students to sign up to meet one on one with the recruiter. Okay, so this year's career center career fair, it will be remote, it will be hosted on handshake. Uh, so you sign up for these little 10 minute windows to, to meet one-on-one -on -one with uh, recruiters. And I wanna just make a special note that, you know, if you log on now, some companies maybe haven't posted their 10 minute appointments, but they will, trust me, you check, you know, uh, 
uh, as often as you can and leading right up to the career fair, um, companies will be hosting, uh, putting up those 10 minute uh, sessions. In addition to those, so we com companies have been encouraged to host 30 minute group sessions where you know, in 30 minutes they invite you know, multiple students. So 20, 30, 40 students into one room and then you hear kind of their pitch and then you get to ask questions. So it's not really a one-on-one -on -one meeting but it is an opportunity for you to learn about the company, see what kind of opportunities they have and then to ask questions. So again, um, companies are not required to host those 30 minute group sessions but they are highly encouraged and many of them um, do. Um, so obviously meeting one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a, a rep there gives you an advantage there and, and you want to learn as much of the, about these companies before the career fair. So that's one of the big tips that we're going to give you homework that you need to do to prepare for the career fair is to do a little bit of research um, and find out, you know, on Handshake and on the company's website what they're offering. Next slide, please, Denise. Thank you. So what are some um, realistic career goals, especially for a first year student? And we get this question, it's a frequently asked question. First year students ask, well, I don't really have any technical skills. Like what are my chances of landing an internship after my first year, right? Like this is my first quarter, literally my first couple of weeks on campus. I don't even have a UCLA GPA yet. Is it really worth my time to go to this career fair? And so we wanna be realistic about what sort of outcomes are um, for younger, less experienced students. Um, and really it's about practice, right? You get to practice talking to a recruiter. You get to ask questions and do what I call reconnaissance where you get to ask the recruiter, hey, what are you looking for in a young, inexperienced, or you know, a, a first-year student who doesn't have as many technical skills? Or what can I do during my first year to prepare for, um, you know, being competitive applicant during my second year? So you get to really ask those questions, and, and without asking them, you won't know the answers to those questions. You also get to expand your professional network. That's a big outcome and goal for that for your first career fair is to meet the recruiter from Google or from you know Tesla or whatever company it is that you're interested in working for is um, and, and hopefully connect with them, right? Ask them for their LinkedIn or their email or their you know virtual business card, right? And connect with them and start growing your professional network. And of course, you know, a lot of you, your first time are gonna be nervous. I was nervous my first career fair, it's it's normal, right? And these are skills skills, how you talk to a recruiter, how you market yourself, how you present yourself is a skill that you need to practice. So, you know, it, it makes sense to practice early and it's okay to mess up when the stakes are low so that you can kind of improve your skills so that by your second career fair, your third career fair, your fourth one, you are uh, honing those skills and becoming much better at how you present yourself. Some ideal goals and outcomes are hopefully the recruiter shows some interest in you and, and engages in a dialogue, in a conversation, and they start asking you questions. Um, you know, all of you should have a resume that you upload to Handshake, and we'll talk about that later on. Um, but, um, you know, hopefully they can see your resume or you can share your screen and share your resume during your one-on-one, -on -one and they either flag it or ask you to email it to them or they download it off of Handshake, um, you know, and, and your resume is flagged for future use. Um, and like I said earlier, another um, good outcome is to connect with the recruiter and hopefully connect with them on LinkedIn or get their email so that you can add them to your professional network. And of course, the ultimate goal, um, which is, you know, and that we, this is another frequently asked question, is how realistic is it for me to get an internship after my first year? It kind of totally depends on a case by case, you know, how many technical skills you have. You know, if you're a programmer and you already have a ton of Python programming skills, then uh, you know your chances are, per, are are higher than somebody who has zero technical skills. Um, but the ultimate goal would be to get invited in for an interview. Next slide, please, Denise. All right, cool. Actually, I think I'm going to hand it over to Hugh on this, right? Um, yeah. For for a handshake. Yes, and so um, as I mentioned, all of our career fairs this quarter will be virtual entirely, so they will all be on handshake. You all already have access to your a Handshake account. You just need to activate it. So go to, and I'll type it in the chat as well, um, UCLA, uh, join.ucla, um, oh my gosh, I'll send you the link. <laughs> um, so what you'll need to do is activate your Handshake account. It's been a very long day. It's ucla.joinhandshake.com. Um, and so, Go on to Handshake, activate your account, and that's where you will find the career fairs. 
Now I'm going to walk you through step by step how to register for the career fair, but you'll also see that there's a, lot, a guide to help you through that even afterwards. So we will be sharing um, the resources for that too. Um, so let me just share the other screen. Okay, so welcome to Handshake. This is Handshake. For those of you who may not have been there uh, on here before, this is a great resource for a lot of different things that we won't go fully into detail about today. But just a little plug, this is where you can access all of the Career Center resources right here and at the top right. Um, so to find the career fairs, you wanna go under events. And up here, do you see all these filters? You wanna go to career fair. Now, sort by date, I'm not sure why now it, it sorts by relevance. And you'll see all of our upcoming career fairs, which you may also be interested in these other ones, but today we'll focus on the engineering and tech ones. So let's say I wanna go to the computer and data sciences career fair. So this is what you'll see. First and foremost, I wanna also let you all know, right in here, you'll see a lot of descriptions to help you with the, the career fair to prepare you for it video again of if you aren't sure how to sign up, um, making sure your resume is ready. So definitely take advantage of all the resources that are linked in there. Um, but to walk you through how to register. So we're gonna click register right here and you'll see this pop-up that says sign up for sessions. So we're gonna view employer sessions. Now you're able to see all of the employers and what sessions they have available. So notice how this one has group sessions available. Um, this one, um, I'm only seeing group sessions available. Oh, you know what? It thinks I'm, it's because I'm not a student. <laughs> I'm a staff member. But we will go with Raytheon, um, where you could see that there are 16 open sessions. So these are the individual sessions versus the group sessions. Now, this does, um, they can have the ability to have certain qualifications for what one-on-ones are presented to who. So sometimes, you know, especially first year students, um, you may see limited access because they aren't hiring first year students. So they're just, it, it's just the way it is. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so we're gonna press one-on-one -on -one with Raytheon. Now um, you'll see that you need to make your profile public and so I'm gonna say, I want it public to employers and update. Mine is private right now because I'm a staff member and I'm not trying to get recruited. Um, but now you'll see all of a lot of information. First of all, you'll see the employer profile, the type of positions that they're looking to hire, the class years that they're looking to hire for. Um, for our international students, this is where you'll be able to see if these are employers who are able to hire international students. And I'll go back and show you how to filter for those as well. Um, and so this is where that researching company aspect comes in. Um, so over here, we'll look at all of the available slots. I wanna go for 530. And so I'm gonna confirm this um, this one-on-one -on -one and see how now there's a pop-up for adding your resume. So you're gonna want to click in there, add your resume. We're just gonna pretend. And then you'll see um, that it shows up on my schedule. So now I can sign up for as many sessions as I want, as long as they're not conflicting. So you wanna make sure that you are not signed up for multiple slots at the same time. But the nice thing about having these career fairs virtually is that you don't need to wait in line. Um, the lines used to surround the buildings on the outside. You don't need to wait in any virtual queue or anything like that you have a designated appointment with a recruiter from Raytheon at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. So you'll see your schedule built here. Now, another thing that I want you all to know is because it's linked to your Handshake account, the employer knows who you are. If you are not able to show up to the appointment, which is life happens, absolutely, um, please make sure to cancel your reservation. One, so that your fellow students can get in there instead, but two, because that way you let the actual um, employer know that you're not going to make it. Um, we want to respect their time, and we also don't want your name to show up on the list of no-shows. 
Um, so you can cancel your reservation right here. I'm going to cancel and let them say um, practice for 150 student demonstration. I'm going to just say thank you so that they don't think I'm crazy. Um, and cancel session. Okay, so that's how you go through that. Any um, questions that you may have about um, that, I'm noticing that there are quite a few questions that are being sent to me privately. Please send them in the public chat so that we can also keep track of, you know, you will know if someone already asked that question. So those who sent them privately, please feel free to send them publicly. Um, and if you want to remain anonymous, you know, I think you can change your, oh, the chat isn't public. I'm sorry. My Ooh, bad. Let me fix that right now. I apologize. That explains so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, you should Let's... all be able to post in the public chat now. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out to us. And I will be, so when Denise is presenting, I will be answering questions in the chat. When While I'm presenting, she, she can answer questions in the chat also. Perfect. Thank you, Will. And, and feel free to let me know if there's anything I need to pay attention to. Um, okay, so that's how you sign up for those one-on-one -on -one slots. Now, while you're here, there's quite a few things that I also want to show you. So you can filter to see if they are hiring an inter for internships versus full-time jobs. Also in the filters, um, you can also filter for um, if for our international students, if they accept OPT, CPT, or if they're willing to sponsor, you can check these boxes to be able to see specifically the employers who are willing to hire international students. That way you're not wasting your time or you're not having to guess or figure that out on your own. We already required that they answer that question. Um, now, again, if we're gonna go back to um, all of them, clear. Let's go back and look at um, the career fair details, okay? So over here, employers attending, this full list shows you all of the employers who are attending and that broader picture of what are they hiring for, what students are they looking to hire. And if you click on their logo, you can also go to their profile. Now, in the profile, you can see reviews about the employer. All, you can learn more about the employer. We wanna encourage you to definitely do your research. And you can also find the jobs that they are hiring for. So when you press see all, this is where you can also submit your resume to these applications that they're hiring for. And you can see specifically just this one employer, how many different types of positions they are hiring for. Okay, so that is um, what I wanted to walk you all through for the career fair. Um, I'm gonna just stop and see, Will, are there any questions that we wanted to address? Um, because I know that this is one of the most important pieces. Yeah, I think the the only, the question which I try to answer in the chat, but maybe you can elaborate is what's the primary difference between those one-on-ones and those group sessions? Yeah, so one-on-ones, um, -on it's literally just you and the recruiter. And so it's your opportunity to have a personal conversation with them, give your elevator pitch, learn about their opportunities and show them how you align with those opportunities. Um, the group sessions are more, one, it's an option for if you're not able to get the one-on-ones. And two, it's um, sometimes like a bit more of like an info session um, where you get to learn more about the company. But also what recruiters have been sharing is that this is their opportunity to um, let's say you had a one-on-one -on -one with Will and I'm in the group session. So now you have two different people that you can introduce yourself to and two different people who can help vouch for you. Um, so you can also use it in that way of meeting more than one recruiter from the same company. Any other um, question that I can help with? I'm gonna just scroll through the chat if we don't mind, Will, is that okay? Yes, of course. And students, this would be a good time if you had a question that um, that you want to, um, you know, say, you can just unmute your mic or raise your little blue hand and we can call on you. So this is a good um, time to pause. So I'm going to start from like the beginning of the chat and then we'll get to hands just because I, I want to make sure we got like an order. Um, so we have a question about freshmen. If the company doesn't list freshmen as students they are looking for for internships can you still sign up as a freshman 
So you may want, you may be able to, um, uh, what's it called? Apply for the position, first of all, like I showed you in the job section. And also if they are looking not to talk to freshmen, they will indicate that. So if you see the one-on-one -on -one availability, you are welcome to sign up for it um, or the group sessions, just know that it's possible that they may not be recruiting first year students at this time. Um, when will career fairs start to be in person? That is all up to our friend COVID. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's kind of out of our hands, but um, the great thing about being able to have our career fairs virtually is that we are able to get employers from all over the nation. Um, and so um, our, we got the feedback from employers that due to travel and you know the change in restrictions and things like that, um, it was just better to be able to have a career fair versus um, you know not have as many employers be able to show up. Um, okay, this was when you all told me that the chat wasn't working. Um, I think there's a question that says, um, will the sessions be hosted within Handshake site, Zoom or other platforms? So all the entire engineering and tech career fair will be hosted on Handshake, including all of those one-on-one -on -one sessions on Handshake and also the group sessions on Handshake. So for this career fair um, that the Career Center is hosting, which is the largest one, it will be hosted on Handshake. Now, there was another question that I answered in the chat that I want to address is there are some smaller niche career fairs, like the American Society of Civil Engineers, a student organization is hosting a career fair specifically for civil engineers. And some of those smaller career fairs will be hosted uh, in person this fall. Uh, so it just depends on the size and the student org that's running that career fair. But this large one uh, hosted by the Career Center will definitely be virtual. Um, and there's a question about like the tight 10 minute schedule. Um, I believe that the recruiters are going to want to stick to the 10 minutes um, as much as you do. Um, but do mentally give yourself a cushion just in case. Um, it's really up to you um, if you have a bunch back to back. But um, I think that they are also interested in getting to the next one as much as you are. Um, if a company, I think we talked about that one. Are there a full time part time? There's a question from Arsh that I can answer um, right now, which is our cover letters a requirement for applying to internships. Um, most companies don't list it as a requirement, but if they allow it, we highly recommend that you do attach a cover letter to your resume. Um, you know, some companies are very explicit and they say we want a resume and cover letter. Um, what I will say is for the career fair, you know, typically do not have to have a cover letter with you at the career fair. What you want at the career fair is, you know, a tailored resume that you can, if you have a one-on-one -on -one session, you can share your screen and show your tailored resume. We'll talk about this later on in the, in the workshop, but um, Handshake only allows you to upload one kind of generic resume for the entire career fair for all of the companies to view. So, um, um, so I think that they changed that. Ooh, that's awesome. That is a new development. That's cool. I might be wrong. You'll oh. be able to tell <laughs> when you press the add documents. Um, I didn't want to actually apply for the position though. Um, there's a question for our international students. Yes, um, just check the ones that say OPT, CPT and the visa items. And that um, shows you the employers who are willing to sponsor international students. Um, uh, there's a question of if you get the internship position, will you have to relocate to their area? That's a question to ask the employer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, not a detail we would know about. Uh, but that's a great question to you know consider, first of all, doing research on because they may very overtly say this is remote or this is not remote. Um, I think that also depends on the type of engineering. Um, but that is a great question to ask the recruiters. Um, should we have a specific position for each company that we are interested in? Is it good to tell the recruiter you are? In? Yes, definitely tell the recruiter if there is a specific position that you are interested in, um, that you applied for, um, especially if they have several positions posted, it helps them know like what pile to put your resume in and what hat to put on when they're talking to you. Um, but also, if you are applying for those positions, they also will know to look for you in that pile. Um, and so definitely bring up a specific position if you are looking to, um, uh, what's it called? If you are looking to apply to specific ones. So, Denise, um, oh, sorry, I thought you were done, my bad. Uh, 
I was just going to move on to the next one. So if you want to. Yeah, I was no, I was just going to say maybe for this because I'm looking at some of the questions and we're going to answer them in the rest of the workshop, like uh -huh. many of the questions. So I feel like for the sake of time, a 530, maybe we should move forward. That's um, a valid point. Because I, I think there's a lot of questions that are like broad, like now they're resume questions that we're going to cover in the rest of the workshop. They're not specific to Handshake and how to sign up for the fair. Okay, yes. Sounds good. Um, I do see a question about what's the difference between October 12th and 13th career fair. Ooh, so I do want to address that. Um, is uh, the difference is that one is for computer and data sciences. So if you are interested in those industries, and the other one is for all other engineering. Um, and so as you know, um, they're very different. And so employers for computer and data sciences will be on the 12th and for engineering and more um, engineering related things will be on the 13th. I hope that helps answer. And I think I saw someone unmute themselves. So I'm assuming there's a urgent question. Um, did you want to ask your question? Anthony? All right, so great. That was a, a good round, uh, first round of questions. Um, we answered several of the questions in the chat. Some of them we answered live. Um, so, you know, again, just to reiterate logistics for those of you who came in late, this session is being recorded. It will be available to everybody who RSVP'd. Um, we will be emailing the video along with the transcript of the chat. Um, so all the questions that were answered in the chat will also be available. Um, so we're going to move on to how to prep before the career fair. And several of the questions have already um, been asked in the chat. So this is a good uh, section uh, for us to answer them, which is, um, you know, what should you be doing to prepare? You should absolutely be researching the companies before the career fair. You, it's not realistic for you to go and talk to or meet with, you know, 10, 15, 20 companies, right? You, you just don't have the bandwidth for that. So you're going to have to pick and choose and be selective and be strategic about which companies you want to talk to. Um, so therefore, you know, you should, if you're not interested in relocating and you're set on having an internship in, I don't know, the LA area, then you should look for that um, you know, like Denise showed you on Handshake, you can click on the actual positions um, and what the company is offering and see if they have positions in the LA area. Um, if you're an international student or if you need OPT, like these are all things you can check before and doing, you know, before the actual career fair and say, okay, this is a company I definitely want to talk to because they have a specific thing that it, that that they have to offer. For example, some companies, you know, like the CIA, for example, they want first year students. Like they're very clear about like, we would rather recruit a first year student than a third or a fourth year student. Um, and, and so some companies are out there, they're, they're looking for younger um, students. And so these are things that you have to filter, right? Um, so do your homework before. And again, Danit already showed you on Handshake how you can click on um, what that company has to offer and what different positions and what they're looking for. Um, scheduling those one on one. So again, you need to decide which companies are you just kind of exploring, like they don't actually offer something that you're interested in yet. For those companies, we recommend you sign up for the group session, right? Sign up for the group session of 30, where you're just there to learn, see what they have to offer, maybe ask a question or two during the group session. And if there's a company that you find that has exactly what you're looking for, like they're recruiting first year civil engineering students, for example, um, then that's a company you want to sign up for a one on one with right so don't waste um, those one on one meetings with companies who you haven't really done your research or you're not sure that you know they're, ex they're they match what you're looking for. Um, definitely before the career fair you need to prepare your elevator pitch and we're going to go into some detail in a slide or two on what that elevator pitch should look like, um, but basically that's how you introduce yourself to the recruiter. Um, because it's virtual professional attire basically means your top, right, for your blouse or your, your button-up shirt for, for males. Um, so, you know, you just want to look professional from here up um, and make sure you have a professional background, right? So, like, both Denise and I have a virtual background, so we recommend you use that. Um, you definitely want to have a copy of your resume on hand and be prepared to share that with your screen in case the recruiter hasn't looked at your resume before your one-on-one -on -one session. Um, so again, you can have the share screen function and be able to share your resume with them and walk them through it as you um, talk to them during your one-on-one, -on -one, your 10-minute one-on-one. 
And of course you want to prepare questions, right? You want to do, and you don't want a question like, Hey, do you offer internships, you know, to first year students? Like you should already look that up, right? You don't want to ask questions that you can find online that you can find on handshake. You want to ask kind of deeper kind of, I call them under the tip of the iceberg questions where you're clarifying things. You're, you're, you want to make it clear that you've done your research, that you know what they offer. And then you want to ask a deeper question, right? So say, oh, I noticed on your website that you have this position, blah, 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 or this, you know, this internship program that you have, you know, uh, and then you ask a deeper level question. So you're making it very, you're setting up your question with the research you've already done so that you're not just saying, hey, uh, do you offer internships, right? Like something silly like that. Um, next slide, please. And if I may, just on one note um, sure. about the backgrounds, um, Will and I did get a question today, for example, um, we know that you are on campus and that you don't have as many like private spaces and things like that. Um, we want you to know that we did let employers know that you are back on campus. They know that you may not have a private space where that's all to yourself. Um, they know to expect, you know, think of it kind of like an in-person career fair. Those are very loud because there are people everywhere. So they know to expect that you're not going to have a perfect situation um, and, and they won't either. Um, so don't worry necessarily about that. Do try to minimize distractions, um, have headphones on if you're able to, so that the microphone is a little bit more focused. Um, but um, just as an FYI, like don't worry too, too much if you're not able to reserve a space for yourself or things like that. Just know that they, they know, they know. Um, and we are gonna go into the question that's in the chat literally on the next slide. Yeah, okay. so- The one after this one. Okay, great. Um, so there was a question in the chat about how you change virtual backgrounds online <laughs> just google it right say ucla engineering zoom background um there are a ton of them or you can just download an image from you know from the website go to google images download it and then add that so i have several here um you know i'm just going to kind of click through them so it's really easy for you to download those you know i have this one for evening i'm meetings. not 100 percent sure that handshake allows for virtual backgrounds though just fyi oh okay good to know yeah. Um, okay. Zoom is a little different than Handshake. So uh, just put your laundry away is the main thing I like to tell <laughs> students. I've seen too many laundry piles, the dirty kind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So researching companies, I kind of already mentioned this earlier. So I'm just going to go into some of the details. Um, so the need already walked you through how to log into Handshake, how to see, you know, um, the participating companies, um, you know, doing the research. So you should definitely... On the company website, you can find things like their mission statement, the products they sell, who their competitors are, what their current news is. So these are all little talking points, things that you can, um, you know, add to your elevator pitch or, you know, align their mission and vision to your, you know, your pitch and, and what we're going to talk about in the next slide. Um, and, and so you want to make sure that, you know, and there was a question in the chat, like, how do you ask a deeper follow up question, right? Like, um, so let's say, for example, they posted on Handshake that they do take international students, right? Um, that they're looking for international students. And so a deeper question might be, oh, well, how many slots do you have available in, the, in your summer internship program for international students? Or what percent in the past of your summer interns have been international students? Um, or how do you process OPT requests and how do you work with you know, uh, the, the Dashu International Center to do that. Those are all kind of deeper level questions that you can't find online, right? That you can only find out by asking them directly. Um, and so, you know, just be basically be more detailed. Um, um, what you see here on the, um, the image here is you see company name, right? The recruiter name, the positions available. And that's really the, the, the column that you really wanna be looking at more closely. Uh, and I highly recommend the more detailed the job description, the better for you, because then you can really hone in on what exactly are they looking for. Some companies post like broad internship um, job descriptions, which is makes it harder for you to really um, tailor your pitch or to um, to ask detailed questions. So the more detailed job descriptions, internship descriptions you can find, the better. Um, and then, you know, they'll tell you what the application materials, what they require. Some say cover letters, some say only resume. 
Um, some want you to, you know, go to their portal. So they'll have like an external application link and they'll put that on Handshake where you just click on it and it'll take you to their uh, internal kind of application website and you have to kind of go through their, to, through their system. Um, and, the, you know, that tends to be the case for larger companies. Um, and then, you know, these are things that you really should be tracking, like maybe creating an Excel sheet um, where you have all this information and you're tracking it. Um, and then you can put like follow up, right? So I emailed a person or I connected them with them on LinkedIn or I applied on this date. Uh, then your follow up questions that you have in case you ever get to meet with a recruiter or have an interview. And then your notes on, you know, um, you know, did you go to, did you meet that person like Joe Smith? I met him at an information session on October 17th and I actually shook his hand and had an in-person conversation with him. Those are the kind of notes that you wanna write because when you reach out to them, you want them to remember you out of the hundreds and hundreds of students that they talk to. So those little notes about the details of your conversation or anything you connected with them on are gonna help you to connect with them and help them remember you um, out of you know the hundreds of students they talk to. Um, Denise, do you wanna add anything to that? Okay, questions to ask recruiters. And again, you know, the, the general here, you know, there is no, you know, bad question, uh, but, you know, recruiters do, you know, imagine you're the recruiter, right? You're sitting there for four hours and you have, I don't know, um, you know, uh, 10 one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, you know, before your first break and you get the same question asked over and over and over again. It gets kind of boring, right? Um, so you, you want to basically ask um, it, it, as many details questions as possible, uh, you know, especially for a first year student or a first timer is, you know, asking them questions on like, what kind of skills are you looking for for somebody who's getting started in this field? Uh, you know, how does the recruitment process work at your company? Because it does vary from company to company. What kind of training or experience or technical skills is your specific company looking for? Because again, it varies from company to company, even for the same you know, job title or position, different companies are looking for different things. And you'll learn even different recruiters or different hiring managers. Once you do enough of these interviews, you're gonna realize that even it, it goes as specific as a hiring manager. Some hiring managers are looking for very specific type of skills that others are not. And so the only way you're gonna find out what they're looking for is by asking them. Um, you know, sometimes you can ask them about their experience with the company and what they love about the company and why they love working there. Um, and the big question towards the end is kind of like, can I connect with you? Can I get your email or can we connect on LinkedIn? How can I follow up with you, right? Because you wanna add them to your professional network. We mentioned earlier, that's one of the goals here. Um, so you definitely wanna ask them for contact information. Um, some of them will give you their one-on-one -on -one email. Some of you will give them you their LinkedIn account. Um, so all recruiters uh, are different. And so it just depends, right? But you have to ask, how can I connect with you in the future? How can I follow up with you? Um, and you definitely want to avoid, like I said earlier, asking information that can readily or easily be found online or on Handshake. Um, you know, it's, it's frustrating for a recruiter to have a one-on-one -on -one session with the student where they explicitly say, look, we only hire U.S. citizens. And then they have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with an international student who's not a U.S. citizen, right? That is a waste of your time if you're an international student and it's a waste of the recruiter's time because we're, they're clearly put on handshake that they're not hiring for that. Um, so, you know, you don't wanna waste anybody's time. Uh, perfect transition to international students. Uh, so, you know, most of the companies will list US citizenship required or they'll say US work authorization. Um, you know, some of them will be as explicit, especially the companies who do hire a lot of international students, they'll be clear about CPT versus OPT. Um, and those are good like questions to ask them if you are an international student and you have a one on one with the company. Um, you can ask the details of how that works, because it's going to vary from company to company. Uh, but but this is definitely one of the first filters and I talk to a lot of international students, um, you know, again. If you're not sure, if you look up, if you do your homework and look on Handshake and do research on the company and it's not explicitly, you know, they don't explicitly say that they're not hiring international students, they don't explicitly say that US citizens only, then that's one of the first things you wanna say in your elevator pitch, right? When you meet with them, you wanna introduce yourself as, look, I'm an international student. Uh, and that's one of the first things you wanna kind of 
one of the first barriers uh, that you want to clarify, right? You want to say, hey, do you hire international students? Because I am an international student. Um, and, and that's something you want to get out early so that you don't waste, you know, 15 minutes talk or 10 minutes talking to them and only to learn at the end of it that they don't actually have the ability to hire international students. So, um, Denise, uh, do you want to add anything to that? I just want to say that um, for more specific questions, definitely feel free to reach out to Dashu. Um, they know a lot more about the intricacies and the details. Yes. And Dashu is the one, that's the office that's going to process your OPT and CPT anyways. You know, I don't do it. Denise doesn't do it. The Career Center doesn't do it. Dashu does it. So they're your go-to resource um, for that if you are an international student. All right. I'm going to hand it off to Denise now and talk about during the career fair. Can you respond in the chat then? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so during the career fair, you want to be present for your sessions. And we say we mean that in two different ways. One, you know, mentally, you want to be there, you want to be available, you want to try and find yourself in a space where you can focus on the recruiter, but also be present as in literally attend your session. Um, we unfortunately have had quite a few um, no shows, and we want to make sure that you know, we don't want it to look bad on you because your name is literally going to be right there. Um, they will be able to see a list of who didn't show and they will see that it was you. Um, so let's not do that. Um, we want to leave a positive first impression, you know, be yourself, um, be welcoming. You know, I know it might be a little nerve wracking, but just think of it as like you're talking to me and I promise I'm not that intimidating. Um, develop your personal brand, which we'll talk about and prepare your elevator pitch. Um, which I know I've, quite a few of you have been asking, like, what does that even mean? Um, okay, so for being present at the fair, um, like I mentioned, try to minimize interruptions, be punctual, um, be attentive, make sure that you have, you know, you've connected to Wi-Fi, you, your device has the battery, you're ready, you know, like you have everything you need. Um, so that honestly, try to get yourself in a good headspace because if you had all these other things that you had to worry about, you may not be fully mentally present um, at the career fair. Now for leaving a positive impression, you know, a lot of first impressions have to do with both what you say and what you don't say. So on Zoom, for example, what I try to do, and you tell me if I've been successful, I try, you know, you naturally look towards where you are on the screen. So I try to keep myself closer to where the camera is so that I'm not looking over there where my laptop is and it doesn't look like I'm talking to you. Um, so on like virtually it's different. It, and so practice, um, you know, open that camera app that your laptop has. Um, I know photo booth was more like when I was in middle school, so I don't know if you're all into it, but look at how you are presenting yourself on camera um, and those type of, um, of cues. Now, verbally, of course, you wanna have a clear pitch. You wanna be able to you know, make sure that they can hear you. You wanna um, be positive in what you're saying not speak too fast. Um, I know that sometimes when I get nervous, I, I say a lot in a very short amount of time um, and, and just try to be positive. I think that's the biggest thing that I would recommend um, because if you feel negative, then they feel negative. Um, and even if something is negative, we make it positive. Um, okay, so about your personal brand. So your personal brand is a combination of your image and your reputation. Uh, and I know, I think it's Will who always suggests like Google yourself. Um, so, you know, your personal brand will be showcased both in how you present yourself and what you say, in what your LinkedIn looks like and what your resumes look like. So we wanna make sure that your resume is good to go, which we will talk about how to make sure you do that. Um, your handshake profile is filled in. A lot of employers say that they are looking um, specifically to see if your handshake profile has you know, the job roles that you're interested in, what locations you're interested in, and that helps them filter and recruit you as well um, when they are searching. So think about that when you have that in mind. Now, um, also when you're thinking about your personal brand, and we won't dive too much into this, but just think about, you know, what are the facets of your identity? What are the intersections, your background, your values? Um, 
you know, I think that a lot of where I'm at today is because I'm a first gen woman, you know, immigrant and what I want to do and how, who I want to help has really helped with my career. So think of it in that sense. Um, what have I accomplished in my academic and professional life, um, especially for engineering, you know, they want to know what projects you've been up to, or, I mean, you made it to UCLA, so first of all, congratulations, <laughs> you know, that's a, a huge feat in itself, um, so think about what helped you get to UCLA, um, you know, you all had to go through that application process, what are your strengths, um, why do people come to you for help, um, I know some are very detail oriented, some are well at organizing teams, some are good at both, you know, think about those things. Um, and of course, what are your aspirations for the future? You don't need to know right now what you want to be when you grow up and forever more, but think about, you know, what direction are you hoping to do? What, what goal do you have with what you want to achieve? Um, and what can you help other people achieve as well? Okay, so those are some things to keep in mind for your personal brand. And um, I'm going to, you know, provide you with these slides. And I, I hope that you sit with them a little bit, because I do think they will help you with the next piece, um, which I hope is on the next slide. Yes, I, um, which is the elevator pitch. Um, so when we say elevator pitch, we mean that this is your 30 second introduction to the employer. Um, this is when you go up and say, hi, I'm Deneen Hampton, and, and what do they want to know about you? So we kind of color coded it, and I won't, um, I won't read what's on the right, so I encourage you to, and again, we will send it to you, but on the left, you'll see um, the color coordination of it. Um, so first, you want to introduce yourself. What do you want them to remember about you, your name, your class year, your major, your interests? Then you'll go into your value proposition. Um, which is what do you bring to the table? So relevant experiences and achievements, transferable skills, excuse me, I know that um, I've met with quite a few engineering students who already are telling me that they're planning on changing to a different major. So maybe introducing yourself as this major is not necessarily what you want to put your best, that first thing forward. So you would say like, I'm a current mechanical engineering student, really interested in CS because I've been really involved in coding projects or, you know, whatever um, reasoning you may have, but that's how you can show those transferable skills, your value proposition. And then you lead into your ask, what do you want from this interaction? So um, I, I know someone in the chat asked, so should you bring up if you're interested in a specific role? Yes, this is where you can um, you can highlight that. You can say, like, I'm specifically really interested in this and this position that you are offering. Um, you know, build on that existing knowledge that you have of the company, of the position, align yourself with it. Why are you interested and why would you be good for it? Um, and also demonstrate that curiosity and that sincere interest in the opportunity. So I definitely encourage you all to read this sample that we have um, and kind of use these building blocks to prepare your elevator pitch. Um, this is the first introduction to um, you and the recruiter. So definitely, you know, put your best foot forward. I don't know how many times I said that tonight, I should probably stop. Um, but I hope this was helpful. Um, and of course, practice makes progress. I say all the time, and if you've been in different presentations of mine, you will keep hearing this, what you think you're gonna say versus what actually comes out of your mouth tend to be two very different things. So I really, really want to encourage you to practice out loud. Um, I can't emphasize enough how much it can help um, with, you know, figuring out, okay, I ran a little long and I didn't get to this point that I wanted to make. I should bring that point up a little earlier, or maybe I need to cut this entire piece out so that I get there faster. Um, so definitely, you know, say it out loud, practice it out loud, um, and you'll be able to then, and I definitely do not recommend writing a script for yourself because that way you will be able to naturally implement different things depending on who you're speaking with and adjust. Um, definitely ask follow-up questions um, so that you show them that you're listening. Um, I already said no script, stay present, be observant. 
um, listen to, you know, pick up on their cues, you know, are they really interested in what's going on? Or do you feel like they maybe have heard this already? And you could joke, like you probably heard this for the 10th time today, you know, and then they'll be like, oh, I'm so glad you said that. Um, be sure to request the contact information. So whether it be that they tell, like, give you an email, their LinkedIn, or they just point you towards a specific application. Um, and definitely write notes um, so that you have you remember different points or in an email, you can make it more personal, like, thank you. I'm so glad we got to talk about this um, opportunity or um, your plant collection. You know, like you don't know what's going to come up, um, but I know with COVID, a lot of people might have plants in their background. Um, okay, so after the career fair, um, we're going to hand it back to Will. Yeah, so we get this question a lot from students is like, okay, well, what happens after the career fair is over? How do I follow up? You know, what do I do? So you should definitely, um, depending on how your conversation goes in those one on ones or what you learn in those group sessions, um, you want to follow through on any next steps or instructions that they give you. So if they tell you, you know what, you're a really good applicant. I love your resume. Please apply. You absolutely want to get that done very quickly. So that within a day or two, you can email them, which is our second bullet, to say, hey, thanks. It was nice to meet you. I followed your instructions. I have applied. Here is my application number or here's the job ID number I applied to. I am now in your system. I'm in your queue. Can you please you know, refer me to the hiring manager, right? Um, so you want to follow up with them um, pretty soon. You don't want to wait too long. Remember, they're talking to hundreds of students at these things. So you're trying to get them to remember you, um, your unique version of who you are, right, uh, out of all of the hundreds of students they talk to. So we do recommend you follow up with them either via email if they gave you their email or via LinkedIn if they gave you their LinkedIn account and told you to connect with them on LinkedIn or via the application, um, you know, website. Now, be careful, you know, sometimes those application websites are the black holes, what I like to call them, right? You apply and then you never hear back from them. So the best thing, you know, one of the benefits of having these in-person conversations is that you can then connect with the, the recruiter directly via email or LinkedIn to say, hey, I have completed my application. It's in the system now. Please refer it to the hiring manager, right? So that's, that's the benefit of having these in-person conversations and hopefully they remember you. Um, so we'll give you some tips on how to write that uh, thank you and follow up email in the next slide. Um, check if the company is hosting another on campus event. Many of these companies don't just come for the career fair. They spend like two, three days here. They have like an interview day or they have like a, a company info session day or, you know, like how to how to um, prepare your application for our our company workshop, you know, so they're here, they're connecting with student organizations, they're hosting events at the Career Center, they're on campus for multiple events. So you want to talk to them at more than one event, especially if it's like your top interested company, right? Like you're like, this is my dream company I want to work at. Go to every single event you can. Talk to as many different people from that company as possible, show up to as many events. So check to see if they're hosting any info sessions. Um, or on campus interviews uh, in the following days, either before the career fair or after. Um, and then start preparing for interviews, right? Um, there's a, a tool on Handshake uh, under resources uh, where called Interview Stream, where you can do mock interviews. And you should always, if you are lucky enough and privileged enough to get an interview invitation or maybe have a, a follow up phone call conversation, you know, a little screening interview, they call them. Um, practice, like Denise says, you know, you think you're going to say something, but it doesn't always come out that way. Um, so the more you practice, like any skill, you will get better at it. So we recommend you practice uh, using Interview Stream, which is a free, again, free uh, software tool on, on Handshake. Um, and I put air quotes because you pay tuition. It's all part of your tuition dollars. So it's not really free. Um, so here's a sample of what a thank you email um, looks like. Again, I'm not going to read it to you. You can read it yourself, but um, I'm going to talk through kind of the key points, right, is you want to demonstrate um, your initiative. You want to stand out. So hopefully there's a unique part of your conversation. I always tell students in your elevator pitch, mention your hometown, mention your personal interests, mention what motivates you, what, you know, what you're into. You know, I'm originally from San Francisco, so I always include that. Um, and, and you know, I try and say something personal because I'm hoping that 
the, the person I'm speaking to or the group I'm speaking to, somebody in there is like, oh, I'm from the Bay too. That's awesome. Oh, you love the Giants? Yeah, I love the Giants. You know, boo Dodgers. Um, sorry, that's probably not too, not too, um, not too popular here in LA. But, um, but, you know, I always mention those things because in your follow-up email, you can say, hey, I'm the person from the Bay who, you know, connect, who, 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 you know, go Giants or something like that. And that will help them remember you, right? It will help them identify you as a unique individual out of the hundreds of people that they talk to at the career fair. Um, your email should be concise. So you see here, it's, you know, you know, three or four short paragraphs. Um, you know, you want to reiterate your interest in the position. You want to reiterate why you are a good candidate um, for, for the position, right? So what your experience is, or, you know, if they talked about certain skills, like if they said, oh, we're looking for people only with SolidWorks. You want to mention that you have solid works experience right in your email and say i'm a good candidate i have the qualifications or you know what you told me you you were looking for i have it um and, and of course you always want to attach your resume um and this at this point it should be a tailored resume so now that you've had that conversation you know what they're looking for so you know what to highlight and what to really focus in on on your resume so you should have a tailored resume and a tailored cover letter specific to that company in that position that you discussed with the recruiter. Um, so um, hopefully you get those tidbits out of your conversation with the recruiter so you can include them in the thank you email. Um, so I, I think that's it for this slide, Denise, if you, unless you wanna add something, you can, okay, good. So time check, it is six and we got about a half hour to do uh, resumes. So. What do you think, Denise? Should we pause to see if there are any questions? Maybe take two or three think, questions, or should we move ahead? I think we should move ahead. Um, yeah. Because I also want to let you all know the Career Center, as well as UIP, we are available to help you out. We yes. will also be hosting an AMA session on Monday. Yeah. So, okay. like, that's where you can definitely, um, you know, ask even more specific questions. I just want to make sure that we get to the resume piece because it is very important. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to kind of go a little faster through it, but mainly because I think it's okay if we don't hit every little thing. So purpose of the resume is that we want you to get it. If we want it to help you get an interview, um, it will help prepare you for an interview. I'm sure a lot of you um, can think of, you know, times that if I asked you a random question, you don't fully remember what in that project entailed or what the details were of the results. Um, working on your resume can help remind you and to build your confidence. Seeing what you've accomplished is definitely going to be helpful. Um, so what are HR managers looking for in candidates? Um, typically, you know, of course, relevant experience. So a lot of students, you know, think that they need to put everything they've ever done on the resume. We want your resume to be one page. And so sometimes you might not be able to fit it all. I did send the link to our career guide in the chat. Um, specifically page 40 is the technical resume sample that is a great sample for you all to refer to. Um, and so look at how they are highlighting the relevant experience, specific accomplishments, and you wanna customize your resume. And we will talk about what that means and illustrate to you um, specifically targeting how do you target your resume from one position to another okay so this is going to look overwhelming so that's why i'm just going to do it one step at a time but this is the overview of all of the different sections that you will find in your resume so first we'll go through um and then when you put your resume together you want it to you know look at the job description what are they looking for what experience do you have and that overlap is what should be on your resume. Okay, so top of your resume is where you should have your contact information, your name, your email. You don't need your full street address, just the city and state that you live in. Um, definitely recommend your LinkedIn. Um, if you have any like online portfolios, this is where you could put that as well. Um, so that's first thing. Then we want your education section. Now I'm going to take a step back and explain. I apologize if you hear my puppy um, in the background. Um, so with a resume, 
Research shows that employers take about six to 10 seconds to look at your resume at a first glance. So we want for them to be able to pick up as much information as possible um, in a very short period of time. So we wanna organize your resume in a way that makes it so that they can pick up as much of that information as possible. Now research also shows, and I tell students to think about like when you're skimming an article, um, that the eye naturally goes up, down, left to right. So you will pay more attention to what's at the top and to the left. And so um, in English specifically, not all languages go that way. Um, so that's why we want to put your education at the top and when you are expected to graduate. Um, so we want them to know immediately, you go to UCLA, you're a chemical engineering major and you're graduating in two years. We want that at the top. Now for our transfer students, um, I did format for you to show you how to highlight both your institutions. We don't want your education section to take up too much space. So if you got um, quite a few AAs or ASs, um, you know, try to think of how to um, maybe put commas so that it's a long sentence versus a, a long list. Um, and then here you can include your GPA, which some recruiters will, will require. Um, and in the relevant coursework section, I want to emphasize that I please don't list all the courses you've ever taken. What you want to list in the relevant coursework section are any courses that maybe you have certain technical skills, which we will get to, that you don't have any actual experiences or projects that you got to illustrate those skills with. So that's where you would put it into the relevant coursework. UCLA coursework is known for how great it is in teaching students those technical skills. And so that's how that's when you would put relevant coursework, if there's a course that you took that taught you a certain skill. So now regarding the technical skills, this is where engineering resumes differ from a lot of other resumes. Your technical skills will be at the top, where for other resumes, they will be at the bottom. The reason being that for your positions, um, the technical skills are very needed. They're necessary. And like I mentioned with that I, um, we want them to know right away, you have these technical skills to offer. Okay, so we can you know, break it down if you want to, from computer, machines, lab, um, whatever. You may have only computer and lab. I don't know, whatever um, works for you, but the main difference is that you want your technical skills underneath your education. Then we will lead into the experience section. Now in experience, and I definitely recommend that you look at the resume samples that I sent um, and look throughout the whole chapter. There's a lot of different ideas of what those subsections can be called. Research experience, project experience, maybe it's engineering experience, and then there's additional experience because you have one engineering project and you have a few other jobs that you've done. Um, you can really play with those and be creative. Um, now in your, in your experience section, you do want everything to be in reverse chronological order. So most recent at the top, um, you want to, you know, definitely emphasize what the, the position was, where the position was, and then your bullet points will go into the details about what you did in the, in the position. Now, okay, great. So um, on page 25 of the career guide, you will see kind of a formula for creating a bullet point. You want to say, that was weird. I didn't do that. What is happening? That was weird. Okay. Um, okay, so you want to say what you did, how you did it, um, give some details, including what technical skills you used, and then share your results. Or um, I often say, you know, what was the end goal? Because sometimes you're not there for the full results. So, like, what were you working towards? Um, you want to use action verbs, keywords, and highlight your skills. And um, so what you'll see is in the next slide, I'll be having the bullet points highlighted in these different colors to illustrate the action verbs, keywords, and skills, and the results. Um, have around three to four bullet points for experience and try to keep it to one line, but if it goes to two, it's okay. No more than two though. It should not be more longer than two lines. Now I can't go to the next, there we go. Okay, so as um, an example, this student 
um, wrote that. So notice how it is a present experience. So everything of theirs is in present tense. So this student developed world's smallest. Oh my goodness, my Zoom is freaking out. I'm so sorry. Develop world's smallest underwater camera system capable of streaming and recording super hydrophobic surfaces under 20 meters of water for at least two hours. Do you see the level of detail there? Um, that is what we want in your bullet points. Too often I see a description of the project, but not necessarily what you did in that project. What role did you take? Um, why? How? Um, those are the things that I want to see. Um, so let's say you analyze results and carefully apply knowledge, uh, the logic. I often see students stop right there. But we want to go into to improve camera performances, to increase quality of streaming um, by 15%. Okay, those are the levels of details that we want to see. Now, when you're targeting your skills, I mean your resume, you want to look at your skills their need and where they connect. The job description will tell you everything you need to know about what they're looking for. They are not keeping it a secret. They will tell you. So review the job description and look for the specific qualifications that they're looking for and the job responsibilities. Underline words and phrases that match your background. Or I had someone tell me like to print it out and then look at every bullet point and, and annotate for myself what experience did I have that that was similar to that bullet point. Um, so then I saw a theme um, of what they were looking for and take an inventory of your experiences like I mentioned of like by seeing that this certain experience that I had came up five times I I'm able to then you know highlight those skills that I had in that position um, and and really cater them to this application. And use the keywords that are in the job posting. Now, um, for engineering students especially, your resumes are more likely to go through what's called an application tracking system. So that's AI that your resume goes through before it sees a human. Um, and so that's why we want your resumes to be plain on the plain side so that they can read them. But also you want to use these key terms so that they pop out in the application um, tracking system. So use the key terms that they use, same words, <laughs> okay? And um, we also have a, um, a resume feedback um, platform that you can leverage 24 seven. Speaking of AI, um, it is like your own personal AI assistant to look through your resume. So this is called VMOC. Um, I was on the testing committee to make sure that engineering students were well represented. So, you know, upload your resume. You have 10 uploads per year. You should not need more than that. So don't make small adjustments and then upload a new one. But don't pay too much attention to the score that it gives you. Pay more attention to the bullet by bullet feedback that it gives you. It'll tell you if you're, you know, using good action verbs or maybe you're not going enough into enough detail about the results. Um, or illustrating your technical skills, it'll help you identify that. And of course, you know, meet with Will and myself and, and our areas um, for human interaction too. So um, of course, for the do's, we wanna place that relevant information towards the top. We wanna target your resume for each specific position. Obviously, some of you may be applying to multiple positions that are very similar. I'm not saying change it every single time, but if you're applying to one that's, let's say, um, data and analytics and another one that's more coding, you want to you know, be a little bit different, even though those are kind of similar um, in, in certain ways. Um, highlight your technical skills in, in all the bullet points. Recruiters tell me all the time they want to see a line from your technical skills to the bullet point. They want to see that you have the skill and how did you do it? What did you use that skill for? How did you leverage it? Um, Quantify your bullets and show results and showcase your project. You will have class projects at UCLA, and those are things that you can include on your resume. A lot of students think that they don't have experience, but you do. Um, and so you can definitely, in that sample that I showed you, the last experience on that resume, that's a class project. So that's an example of how you can um, format it. So some don'ts. Definitely try to avoid grammatical errors. 
don't use templates. Um, first of all, they're not flexible, but also um, the ATS systems tend to not like them. Um, obviously, don't lie or exaggerate on um, your experiences. Some students ask if they should put things that they plan to do next quarter. Don't put it on there until you are doing it. Um, even if you haven't finished it, that's okay. But like once you're doing it, um, you don't need to put references upon request. You And um, for your high school, first year students, you can still keep high school on your resume. But after the middle of your second year, you should be taking high school off and you should have more experiences to add um, from college. Should there be a career objective statement on a resume? So yes and no. Um, we often mostly no, you don't need it. But we have heard from employers that let's say they have three very different positions posted and they have one application link that they are cha like channeling you towards um, because it's easier for them to keep it as like a UCLA pile, then you may want to have an objective statement that says that you are interested in an electrical engineering position and not the mechanical engineering position. Um, and so you would have just a sentence to help them know what you're interested in. But that's only if um, the, the company has multiple positions and on the at the career fair at this specific career fair you won't you shouldn't have it because you're not going to be able to target it the way that you would um now i don't know if i should stop for these questions will what do you think i think we can yeah i think we're good on time it's 6 17 so i think this is a good place maybe to launch our second poll and yeah. then we can get into some question and answer um i'm answering one right now um, about, um, and there was a question earlier that I want to address. So maybe while I answer this one, you can look through some of the other questions. Um, so let me just finish. I was typing the response to just learn in courses. So there was a question about oh, courses. Oh, yeah. So you, you write and I'll, I'll do this. Yeah. Well, I just, I just, uh, press, I just loaded it onto the chat. So the question I wanted to address is, um, Somebody asked about experiences, right? I'm a first year student. I have no UCLA experiences yet. The only experiences I have are from high school. Can I just use my high school resume? So obviously there's not much you can do other than start getting UCLA experiences. I wanna mention the Engineering 96 course and do a shameless plug. This is a course that's offered at the School of Engineering where it throws you directly as a first year student, first quarter or take it next quarter if you can't fit it into your schedule this quarter it immediately to throws you into a design project. So the whole point of the course is for you to gain technical experiences. Before, you, you used to have to wait till senior year to do a technical design project, a senior design project. Now, as a first year student, your first quarter on campus, you can do a hands-on engineering design project. And that is a great resume skill builder. Another thing I want to plug are the student organizations. If you're an electrical engineer, IEEE has an amazing ops program where you do a little like project every week where you're learning technical skills, like how to, you know, how to work on, a, how to code an Arduino, how to, you know, solder a circuit board. I mean, these are all little technical skills that you can add to your resume. And um, pretty much all the student orgs now have these introductory skill building kind of series of workshops that you can sign up for. So I highly recommend um, that, that you do that. If you're a CS student, you can start learning programming, right? You can do those personal projects if you're coding apps on your, your, in your own time. That is definitely something worthy of putting on your resume. It's a personal technical project. Any coding experience you have, if you have a GitHub and you have a portfolio of your code that you want to showcase, put that onto your LinkedIn, you know, mention that on your resume. These are all technical skills you can add. Again, you're getting them outside the classroom, but also in the classroom. So I'm going to get to some of the questions in the chat. Um, so thoughts on including currently enrolled course workers stick to complete it. You can put currently enrolled um, courses. Um, it's up to you. Um, don't list all of them, you know, but be selective. But I do understand, you know, if you're it, just starting, I understand why you would want to list them. Um, what about non-STEM work experiences like manager at local coffee shop? Should these remain on our resume? Yes, you can definitely keep them on your resume. I would just um, make sure that you target them in the sense of, you know, transferable skills. 
did you 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 mentioned that you were a manager or a fake we will we'll say air quotes manager um so that means you manage the team you manage the schedule you manage goals and in engineering you use a lot of teamwork and you have to organize yourselves as the team as timelines as projects and so highlight it in that sense so even though it was a coffee shop you could still very much show your leadership experience your um, teamwork abilities your organization skills um, leadership skills if there is a club I have just joined and is very relevant to the industry I want to go into, should I put it in my resume? Absolutely. Um, you'll see at the end of page 40 um, that they have an activity section, um, but you know because they're limited on space, they just have the name of the club, the position, which you can include member if you just joined, and what year, of what month and year you joined to present. Um, and so, yeah, definitely you can, um, you can definitely post, put it on your resume. And I know also, for example, like SWE, Society of Women Engineers, they have a very large network nationwide. And so having that on your resume could also help you out. Um, so uh, yes, absolutely for that. Um, would you mind repeating which engineering class does the technical project? I already put it in the chat. Okay, awesome. Engineering 96 course. And I'm answering the question right now about links in the resume. Mm -hmm. um, in the chat and I'll go ahead and click enter, but um, we recommend LinkedIn to be your like online portfolio, so to speak, right? So you can put, it's really your CV, right? Your CV is everything you've ever done. You could have videos of your work. You could have your GitHub, um, you know, you know, any, basically links should go on LinkedIn and the, you know, sometimes on your resume, depending on the software, the company where you upload your resume, links don't always come through. So you want to have like a tiny URL or a short URL for your LinkedIn and have that like actually written out on your resume. And sometimes the hyperlinks that you put on your resume may not, um, you know, may not translate to whatever resume software the company is using. So that's why we don't, I don't typically recommend uh, to have links in, other than your LinkedIn link um, URL on your resume. Um, or if you have like a GitHub with a personalized URL that the, that's easy for them to, you know, if they're not able to click in it, into yeah. it, um, I have seen those as well. Um, any other questions? And I think at this point, um, maybe we can stop the recording so that we can have them raise their oh, hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I guess before we close the recording, so again, anybody who RSVP'd will be getting an email with the video. Um, to today's workshop and also a transcript uh, of the chat um, and all the different resources we put in the chat. Um, before closing out the video, I do want to recommend, um, actually, wait, we have a couple more slides, don't we, Denise? Oh, or yeah. I think just to go over the, just the connect with us slides. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we should go over these. Um, so I do recommend you connect with either, uh, with both the Career Center and um, the undergraduate internship program. So we put some links in the chat earlier. So I'll go ahead and put those in again. Connect with us on social media. Um, you know, the undergraduate internship program has a YouTube channel. It has a Instagram. It has a Facebook. It has um, a, a LinkedIn account. So you can follow us so that you can get the most up to date kind of, you know, new postings, new jobs, internships. We put all of that onto our social media handles. So highly recommend you follow us. Um, I believe the Career Center also has resources. Denise, you want to talk about those real fast? Yeah, so this um, QR code will lead you to kind of like a link tree of a, a bunch of different resources of ours. So we still have our main website, of course, but um, under the virtual, you can see our virtual library of resources where you can access, you know, that VMOC that I mentioned, or Forage is really great for gaining those experiential learning opportunities that you can put on your resume. Um, that's where you can also find, you know, how to create appointments with us, how to register for the career fair. Um, so this QR code um, is great to kind of find your way to all of those things. Um, and the Career Center, you know, is definitely available for all of these things, including at the bottom, you'll see our YouTube channel, where we have quite a robust library of recordings um, okay. for a lot of different things that you um, may find useful. We have ones that are more well produced that are shorter, about three minutes each. So definitely recommend those. Um, and if you're looking for more detail, um, we have our expanded library as well. All right, great. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording now so we can take questions.